Okay, how are you everyone? Jesse here with Redefine FX and today I want to show you how to make particle physics in real time using just the motion design tools. So we have the particles colliding with our geometry, they're affected by forces. This is a beginner friendly setup that you can follow along even if you're brand new to the motion design tools. And actually this tutorial is just one out of 15 total lessons in the free motion design crash course that I just released in Unreal Engine 5.7. We cover all of these effects that you're seeing on the screen right now, covering all sorts of different cloners, effectors. I also show you how to make these dynamic materials that light up when they're affected by the effector. So there's a lot to learn in this free course, so make sure you grab it at redefineffects.com slash realtime while it's still available. All right, first thing you want to click on this button and enable the motion design mode. Then you can click on camera and switch back to default viewport. Then we can go to mode, select motion design, cloners, and we want the sphere uniform cloner. Just select it and then click to create. You can reset the cloner rotation, set the count to 100 and radius to 200. I need to replace these cubes with spheres. So you can expand the cloner to see the default cube and just delete it. And then we can go to create shapes and create a sphere. I will set the scale to 0.2 and we have to make it movable for it to work with the cloner. So under mobility, click movable and then drag it on top of the cloner. And I want it to be surrounding the cart. So I'll select my GPU model, right click on location, copy, and then select the cloner location paste. So now with the cloner selected, go to Effector, Create Linked Effector. And you want to increase the outer radius and the inner radius until all of the spheres change color, which means that they are affected by the effector. And then we can scroll down and enable forces. And I want to enable the attraction force. I'll set the strength to 50 for now. And so they're being attracted in the middle, but they don't have any collisions yet. For that, we need to go back in the cloner physics tab and say enable surface collisions. This will make them collide with surfaces but not with each other. For that we need to also enable particle collisions so they will collide with each other but they're not giving each other any velocity when they collide. So for that we can enable collision velocity enabled and now they will actually get velocity from their collisions which right now makes them explode around a little bit but we'll fix that. So to understand how this works, you have this preview collision grid. If I enable that, you can see this huge grid box surrounding my whole scene. This is actually the simulation area. So by default, it's pretty huge. So we can reduce it from 5000 to just 1000. And this already makes the collisions behave in a more calm way. Now, depending on your scene, you can experiment with increasing the collision grid resolution. By default, it's 32. You can even set it as high as 500. And you will notice how tiny the squares on the grid get to visually show you that the resolution has increased a lot. But I found in this example, it just makes the spheres way more sensitive to collisions and they end up kind of just exploding. So in this case, we will leave this at default of 32. So this is not bad. We're almost there. However, the particles are intersecting our geometry, right? Kind of half of them is inside the geo and that's controlled with the collision radius mode. So I found the easiest way to fix this is actually to change the collision radius to manual and set it yourself. And so if I set this number to 20 instead of 10, now the collision radius of the spheres is bigger than the spheres themselves. So they actually keep a pretty big distance away from the geo. So after a bit of back and forth, I ended up settling at 13, which makes it look pretty decent. And I animated the cart to simply spin. And so now we can introduce a bit more movement to the particles because they just kind of are attracted to the middle. So we can go back to the effector and we can enable the vortex force, which will make them spin around like this, but it's way too fast by default. And they also keep on accelerating. So I will also enable the drag force and set that to 0.5 and reduce the vortex force to 50. They are continuously slowed down by the drag and they also spin around because of the vortex force. So you get something a bit more interesting like this. 
And finally, I want different materials for these spheres. So under the cloner, I will copy the sphere three more times. So I have four total. And I will apply my emissive material to one of them, this gray one to the other, this silver one to the third, and this dark one to the fourth. If you'd like to create the materials and set up the GPU and everything, that's something we do in the full free course. The link to that is in the description. And so now that I've added more spheres, the collisions are turned off. And that's because I need to set the radius for the other spheres as well. So I'll set all of them to 13. And actually for the glowing spheres, I want them to be smaller. So I'll just set the scale to 0.05 only for the glowing ones. So here you go, some pretty satisfying particle physics running in real time with just the motion tools. If you enjoy setting up these kinds of effects, there are a lot more examples in the full free motion design crash course. I will also show you how to treat the cloner system as an actual particle system and create these kinds of arrows or this speed tunnel with energy trails. So all of that and more is inside the course at redefinefx.com slash real time. The link is in the description and I'd love to see you inside. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this valuable and I'll see you in the next one.